So um, I work at Monash Health and I'm also doing a PhD looking at how staff respond to disinvestment. So we actually wanted to look at, we did a literature review, looking at um, services that um, there'd been a proposed disinvestment in the health, in the part of the health service. So not so much single tests or procedures, more when you're moving resources from one area of health into a, an area of higher value care. So, oh, sorry, I want to stay on that one first of all. So our search criteria were, we wanted, um, we wanted to look at papers that described a health service disinvestment that was implemented or planned, but not implemented because of staff reactions, and also had data on the staff reactions. And we did a systematic search and found 643 papers. <coughs> Luckily, in the, fi in the um, five minutes I've got, only 12 of them met all of our criteria. So we did a quality, a quality appraisal of those. We found that most of them, all of them had qualitative data in them and some of them had quant data as well. The, some of the interesting things about these 12 papers was that 10 of them were all written in the last 10 years. So quite a new area of research. Um, so some of these were looking at single disinvestment ideas. So trying to um, prevent, stop people doing a, a particular, um, moving money from one, one area of service to another. And a number of them also were actually looking at disinvestment itself. So they were getting in contact with different health services and asking them if they'd been involved in any disinvestment. And what we've also found was that um, of the, there was eight single initiatives. Five of them were successful and three of them weren't. There were four multiple site initiatives. One were, in one of them, they were all successful and three of them had mixed results. So there is still quite a few mixed results here. Um, I think the other thing to remember is that if people do research and it's not successful, they're actually much less likely to publish and they're le much less likely to get published. If, even if they want to, it's harder to get that work published. So I think we, um, this really tells us that actually making these sort of changes is actually really hard. The participants in these were um, from all levels of health. So you'll notice that all of them were in public health systems. Uh, so they varied from the level of health commissioners in the UK. There were service directors, managers, clinicians. There was also um, consumers and carers who were interviewed as part of these studies. So when there's a disinvestment idea in, in an area of service that people provide, what we tend to find to start with is that the, the, the initial reactions are, are really quite negative. So in eight of the 12 papers, people were anxious about the idea of disinvesting in a service that they provided. So one of the quotes was that starting to talk about disinvestment makes everybody extremely nervous. And people are also used to fighting for their patch, particularly in, in public health. So, so one of them said, to stand in front, of, in front of a judge with everybody here to defend their own corner, that they had to prove the hard work that they do. And often they were, felt like they had to, to prove the work of, of their um, colleagues as well. Another reaction was that the staff tended to feel disempowered and disrespected with even the idea that you might want to stop doing a service that they, had, that they provided. One of the quotes was, one of my feelings was that it's a scandalous thing to suggest that my practice may be skewed by my personal financial gain. Staff also dis can dismiss the idea to disinvest. So it's like, it's one of them said, it's like everything else you do, you can find a ways around it. So it was interesting, a number of the staff quoted were talking about, oh, I just changed the criteria to make sure that the, my patient fits the criteria because I know that they need this particular intervention. Um, and there was also a lot of distrust about where the money was going to be reallocated to. So um, what we wanted to do was have a think about, we, we looked at why we thought these reactions happened and what we could do to, what, what were the more likely um, circumstances that made these more positive and when, when we had a positive outcome with the disinvestment. So we felt that it was linked to professional identity. 
So Martin observed that healthcare professionals may value the provision of the highest quality of healthcare over cost effectiveness, which is a possible contributor to spiralling healthcare costs. And there can also be a clash between the organisational identity, when the organisation wants professionals to do something compared to their professional identity, particularly if health professionals um, end up with less choice in the service they provide. So we found that it was much more likely that it would be a, um, not a successful disinvestment if there was no engagement, if the, um, if the staff didn't understand the context of the disinvestment, and if they didn't think it was transparent, if they didn't really understand how the decision was made and where that money was going to go to. We found that the positive modifiers were the invitation to engage, big picture context, and a transparency of process. And that it seemed that as, as part of that engagement in the process, there may be a modification of the professional identity of the staff, which allows them to um, accept the disinvestment and then you're more likely to have practice change. But it was really interesting in that it wasn't always the people at the top of the organisations who thought that, that we needed to um, ration healthcare. It was often, um, the, the, some of them was the, was the clinicians and it was quite often also the consumers who said, we know that the health dollar can't stretch to everything. So um, yeah, they're the messages which I think we've heard at, at time and time again today that we really need to get people involved in, the, in, in those decisions to change the way we do things and that way we're much more likely to have a successful result. Thank you. Thank you.